Hey everyone, it's Sunday, August the 12th, 2012. Uh, it's been uh, two years now since we started this obsession, and this is this is where the roads led so far. Uh, I know it's been a long time since the last update, but this uh, this overhaul on the room took a lot longer than I, I had planned. But uh, oh well, uh, we got six tanks down the right hand side I've added two two additional tanks here down here on the left for a total of eight grow out tanks uh, we built two new 330 gallon biofilters so Sand filter, which is not sand anymore, got ceramic beads in there. Uh, bought a new pump and uh, installed that in addition to the old one horse car pump back here in the corner. Uh, did that so that if one pump fails, we'll have a backup. Got them both plumbed in, so all we got to do is switch two valves here and we can run either pump at any time. Uh, this new pump is pretty sweet. It's uh, a variable, variable speed pump. Uh, it's infinitely variable. You can set the set the RPM for uh, any any RPM that you want, so that you can run the pump, uh, adjust the pump to your system, so that you don't have to overdrive or underdrive the pump. Uh, it's real. It's really quiet. You can even program the thing. Uh, we can program it to slow it down at night or speed it up when they're feeding. Uh, we haven't played with that yet, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that here one of these days. Uh, the way it all works is the, uh, all the tanks are connected at the bottom here with this four inch waistline. That sucks out all the poo, all the dirt. I don't have to do any manual cleaning of the tanks at all. Uh, the fish just act as, as brooms and they sweep everything to the drain for me. Uh, line makes a U-turn there at the wall and comes back up and collects these last two tanks. Comes up past the biofilters. into the sieve, up and over the dam, down through the stream, into the sump, pump sucks the water out of the sump, up through the filter, out of the filter, into a new piece that we made here. It's, uh, it's actually an oxygen injector. Uh, water comes up, makes a U-turn, goes back down into the unit, and at that point, I've got a uh, just a small oilless air compressor on the other side of the wall. Uh, and at this point here, we combine. Uh, I got uh, the air running at 30 pounds pressure. And that's injected into the water, which I'm running at 15 pounds pressure. So somewhere in the in the vertical height of this unit here, uh, the air from the air compressor is actually forced to absorb into the water. Uh, that's been a, that's been a big help to the fish. They uh, now got some air to breathe. Uh, yeah. 15, 15 pounds pressure on the on the system. Water continues up into the biofilter, and then I lift it up one more time uh, into that discharge bar. Water goes into one of those three buckets, uh, and I've got the filler pads in the bucket. 
the, the water goes down through those filter pads and that, that uh, screens out any, any of the fine material that's left after, after the sieve and the, and the uh, sand filter, which there is, there still is quite a bit in there. Uh, we have to actually pull those pads out of the bucket every day and wash them out. Uh, otherwise, the bucket, the pads plug up and the buckets will overflow, which, which that's okay. We've got, a, I've got another pad floating on the water underneath there uh, to catch that. If that happens, uh, those pads will catch that. And then the water uh, in these in these uh, bio tanks here, I've got uh, dividers that I made out of an old old tote. I just cut an old tote uh, tank apart for the uh, for the dividers and pop rivet them in the in the uh, these new tanks here. And that uh, what that does is that forces the water to go down underneath the divider and then back up. And you can see where the orange starts here. It comes up through about 18 inches of twine that I've got in this in this chamber, this bio tank. The water has to come up through that. Uh, that supports uh, grows the bacteria. Uh, from there, it goes through five two-inch pipes crossed into the next tank where I've got about 18 inches of K1 in there boiling. Uh, just, uh, I've just got a bar in here with holes drilled in it that I'm feeding with this air pump right here. That just boils the media all the time. Water goes down, down through the K1, underneath the divider up this far side where I've got another 18 inches of that twine. Water comes up through that. Uh, on the right hand side of the tank here I've got eight, eight one inch lines uh, installed through the side wall with uniseals. One inch lines come out of that tank individual dedicated one inch line to each tank so I don't need any valves, no adjustments necessary. Size of the line determines the flow back to the tank. Drop off another one there. Clear down to the last tank where I've just got a uh, small UV light. UV light takes care of the green water problems, uh, sterilizes the water, disinfects it. It's not full flow, but uh, that's okay. It gets enough through it to handle the job. Uh, that's pretty much how it all works. Got the, got the, uh, probably 50 pound and a half fish in this tank here. These guys are getting pretty good size. You can see how crystal clear the water is. I mean, it's just, it's just perfect. Uh, those biofilter tanks are, are really working really well. It's got the zero, zero ammonia, zero nitrites. These guys are getting pretty good size. In fact, I'm going to fillet a few of them today. They don't know that yet. These guys are hybrids here, all male hybrids. They're pretty fast growing. These, these guys are only seven months old. They, they're, uh, they definitely outpace the, the blues as far as uh, how fast they grow. 
uh, we're probably going to switch switch to these guys here in all, in all the tanks here eventually. Check out the size of that Oscar down there. We keep an Oscar in each tank to uh, take care of the algae for us. He's probably he's probably a foot long at Oscar down there. These two tanks over here, we got a bunch of small ones in there coming on. There you can hear the air compressor running. Head to uh, head to buy and uh, hook up a small pressure washer uh, over the sink here. That's that's how we clean. Uh, we found out that's the, really the only way to clean uh, clean the screen in the sieve. You, you just can't wash it out any other way and make it make it clean. So we use the pressure washer for that and to wash out the, the filter pads there in the, in the buckets. But, uh, the other thing we got to do is, uh, even though the ammonia and the nitrates are, are perfect, we still got to change some water. The, the nitrates, uh, we got to change, uh, the system holds about 2,700 gallons of water and we change uh, approximately 250 gallons of water every day just to keep the nit nitrate levels uh, on the scale. Uh, that's the only way to get rid of the nitrates is to change, do water changes. Uh, if you don't do that, they just keep stacking up and uh, increasing, increasing in, in levels. So you got to get rid of uh, some of them by changing the water. The only other thing I'm going to do, I mean, I'm real happy with the way this room is, is working. It's, it's, it's pretty sweet now. And, uh, we don't have to do a whole lot to, to make it run on a daily basis. Uh, so I've got a, a, a plan for an addition on the back of the barn here uh, for a, uh, a system to handle the nitrates on, on a discharge, handle the discharge water. We're going to process it and uh, use that water. Uh, Try and grow some greenhouse uh, strawberries next summer. So uh, I'll keep you posted about how all that works and stuff like that. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching.